Hi, I'm DJ, the Data Maintenance Manager. I keep information neat and orderly at UBC, and I provide my colleagues help in handling records, as it is an important part of everybody's job. I will be your guide throughout this course. Let's learn a little about records management. In this first module, we'll cover What is a record? Who owns the records we create at work? What is a record's life cycle? What is a record? A record is any type of information that is created or received as part of doing business at UBC. A record can take all sorts of forms. An email, a voicemail, a handwritten note, a record in a database, an electronic file, or a formal document. Did you know outside of work, you and I have records? Yes, records with our personal and private information on them. A driver's license, a credit card, or a paycheck. We don't just leave them lying around because they contain our personal information and we don't want that information to fall into the wrong hands. The same care needs to be taken when handling work records, particularly when those records contain personal information. For records containing personal information, there are legal requirements on how to retain and destroy them with consequences to you and the university if those requirements are not followed. Records created as part of doing your job at UBC belong to the university. They cannot be taken with you if you change jobs or leave UBC. This includes work emails addressed to you. UBC has a policy governing how all university records must be treated. Policy 117 describes the records management life cycle. I encourage you to have a look through it. There are three key elements of the policy that you should know. The first is records creation. Records must be created documenting actions, transactions, and decisions of university business. The second is records retention. Records must be managed and retained to meet legal, administrative, operational, or other requirements at the university. The third is records destruction. Destruction of records must be done securely according to retention schedules created by the Records Management Office and approved by the University Archivist and Legal Counsel. Let's take a closer look at the three key items of Policy 117. Records creation. In our day-to-day -day work, we make decisions. Decisions need to be captured, tracked, and documented properly. For example, meeting minutes are created to document actions and decisions that are made at a meeting. It's easy for people to forget what was decided on, especially if any time goes by. We all have lots going on, and it's easy to forget what was decided. Records creation is the evidence of decision making. Let's talk about records retention and some of the tools that can help you with the management of records. One of those tools is the classification and retention schedule, which describes and defines how long records should be retained. It is a tool that we can use to help us take the guesswork out of records management. Classification and retention schedules also help in the disposition of records. Let's say you run out of storage space in a closet or shared drive. You cannot just arbitrarily start shredding or deleting records. Why? Records are evidence of actions and transactions, and if they are requested by management, auditors, or the courts, they must be available. This is why following the university classification and retention schedule is important. Once records have met their legal, administrative, or operational requirements, they must be either properly destroyed or sent to the university archives. University record schedules describe legal, administrative, or operational retention periods. If no retention period exists, contact the records management office. As a rule, we do not keep records around just in case we need them. Retaining unnecessary records is costly and poses a potential security risk for the university. Many of the records we store contain personal information that we are required by law to protect, and destroying it according to the retention schedule is one of the ways we ensure its protection. We, as UBC staff, are obliged to protect that information. In summary, a record's life cycle consists of the creation, management, retention, and disposition of university records, and that any information that is created or received as part of doing business at UBC is a record. All records are the property of UBC, and Policy 117 governs how records are managed, including creating, storing, and disposing of records. Records management might seem a little complex at first. Remember, you don't need to do this yourself. The Records Management Office at University Archives is available to help. The Records Management Office can help design and build your department's record management system, store and destroy records securely, and assist with projects. Check the resource section of this course for contact information. Let's now do a quick quiz to see what you have learned.